My name is Kalika. I'm a registered nurse and patient care coordinator. And come on in. Welcome to Queens and Power Health in Eva Beach. Like I said, my name is Katie Kemp. I'm a registered nurse. My formal title here is Patient Care Coordinator. So to give you a little brief background on what I do, um, I focus on patient education in a primary care setting. Most of you may understand primary care as your family practice doctor, you know, somewhere that you go once a year. For me, I do a lot of patient education for our older adults who struggle with diabetes, heart failure. I even run some smoking cessation classes. So to give you some background on my clinical practice and how I got here, I have four years of nursing experience. I have never worked in a hospital, which may be startling for some of you because that's what we think nurses do. But I've worked in community-based health roles. I worked in a care home, assisted living, and in home health. Home health is where you actually go to people's homes after they've been discharged from the hospital or a skilled nursing facility. I now work in primary care. So I'm gonna go into the three questions that Career Chronicles posted for me. All right, so Career Chronicles asked me, um, what experience do you need in order to become a nurse? So I'm gonna give you three points to think about. The first is I would recommend volunteering. And volunteering could be in any healthcare setting from a hospital, an assisted living facility, um, a pediatric intensive care unit, or maybe even um, working in the community as someone who helps getting groceries for elderly or maybe with transportation. So volunteering in any type of healthcare capacity would help you gain experience to become a nurse. The second option that you have is you can shadow. So if you have a family friend who is a nurse, I would highly recommend asking them if you could shadow them at work. There are gonna be some facilities that might not let you shadow, but don't be disheartened. Another opportunity you could utilize is doing an informational interview with that person. So what that means is you're asking that person, what does your day look like from the day that you, from the time that you walk out the door to coming back home? What are you doing during the day? What are the things that you don't like about your job? What are the things that you really like about your job that make you go to work every day? So ask them for the honest truth. Another opportunity that you could consider when thinking about shadowing is looking at other healthcare professionals. So not just nurses, we could consider physicians, respiratory therapists, pharmacists, or maybe even a CNA. And what a CNA is a certified nurse assistant. This is actually a program that you could go through and there's multiple programs in the state of Hawaii and if you become a CNA, you could actually get paid to work. So you're getting some real life work experience and you aren't just volunteering, you're getting paid for your time as well. The second question Career Chronicles asked me is what struggles have you had and how did you overcome them? This is a big question. So I'm just gonna give you one example. The second year of being a nurse, I had two jobs. My first job was full time which means I worked 40 hours a week. I was working five days, eight hour shifts. My second job was part-time. I was working 16 to 20 hours. And so I would go four hours a day in the morning to the clinic that I worked at. I would have 30 minutes to drive from that clinic to the assisted living, and then I'd work eight hours afterwards. I got burnt out and it wasn't healthy for me. So what did I do to overcome that struggle? I talked with my clinic manager and told them these were the requirements I needed in order to stay there. I said I needed to be out of the clinic at a certain time in order to give myself one hour for lunch. And that took away me dangerously driving while eating lunch to my job. I had an additional 30 minutes to eat. I also set boundaries and said I needed at least one day off during the week where I didn't work either job. And that came from a moment in time while I was working those two jobs where I worked 21 days straight without getting a day off. So my big uh, word of advice would be is that when you start looking at positions, start identifying what your priorities were. For me, it was having days off and having enough time to eat and feel well rested. So that's how I overcame that struggle with nursing. And then the third question that Career Chronicles asked me was how much college did I have to go through and what were the requirements to get into nursing school? So nurses could have very different levels of practice um, and also different levels of education. 
there's associate degree nurses, bachelor's degree nurses, and even master's degree nurses. So I chose the bachelor's realm. I have a bachelor's of arts in nursing, otherwise referred to as a BAN. You may hear some people have a BSN, which is a bachelor's of science in nursing. It's the same amount of training. I just went to a liberal arts college where they encouraged us to explore multiple different areas of study and not just stay in one track. So I went through four years of college. The nursing school portion was two years of those four. So my two uh, early years were prerequisite courses. My two later years were fully nursing focused. In order to get into the nursing program, there were a couple different requirements. One was GPA. The second was getting in prerequisites. Those included biology, chemistry, human anatomy, and a writing course that focused on research. The third was doing a letter of intent or an essay that says, why do I wanna be a nurse and why do I think I'd be appropriate for my school's nursing program? And the fourth was doing an interview. And that interview was probably the most daunting. It was myself plus four other students who were also applying to the program and then four professors sitting on the other side of the table. And each of us had an opportunity where we could be answering one of the questions first and then we would subsequently answer other questions later on. So in order to get to the nursing program, that's what I considered. But if you're considering going into nursing, my big recommendations for you is look at schools that one offer a nursing program and when you're thinking about college, look at schools that will fit your learning needs. When I started looking at college, I thought I wanted to go to one of those really big state schools. And I later learned that I didn't want to be one of 300 kids sitting in a lecture hall. So I started looking at smaller schools where maybe the classroom size was only as big as 45. And then later as you get on into your higher courses, those classroom sizes get smaller and smaller. I hope that this was helpful and that you learned what a registered nurse does. Feel free to contact me and thank you Career Chronicles for this opportunity.